the post-pandemic cost of living crisis in Australia is making things hard for many families to survive. This is especially apparent for those in the low to middle income bracket. Chantelle is a single parent of two young boys and owns her own home. She is currently facing significant financial challenges like many Australian families due to the rising cost of living post pandemic. I have to cut back, you know, lunch dates with girlfriends, um, dinners with my boys. We've definitely felt the pinch. I'm thankful that when I refinanced to pay the boy's dad off, I actually fixed my interest rate at a low rate. Having said that, towards the end of the year, I've heard that the fixed mortgage rates are going to be finishing up, so I may find I will struggle a bit more. Since May 2022, the Reserve Bank of Australia has hiked interest rates 12 times taking the cash rate from its historical low 0.1% to 4.1%. For the average Australian mortgage of around 620,000, that's added an additional $19,812 over the last 13 months of interest payments. My name is Isaac Gross. I'm a senior lecturer in economics here at uh, Monash University, and I specialize in macroeconomics. So studying monetary policy and the housing market, uh, and I used to work at the Reserve Bank of Australia. Uh, inflation affects all parts of the Australian economy. It's affecting households that are seeing rising prices in the supermarket, uh, and also affects uh, households that aren't in the labor force at all. So students who are facing rising interest payments on their hex bill, and pensioners who are, are facing rising prices, but are perhaps dealing with a, a fixed income. Australians are seeing an increase in the cost of living across the board, from housing right through to basic necessities such as clothing. My focus is solely trying to get through this period without becoming bankrupt or having to take out any extra loans just to get by. You tend to focus more on the now and just trying to get through the now rather than where you're going to be able to be in five years. So despite the fact that we've seen inflation going at over 6%, a very high rate, wage growth has still remained quite moderate. So that is going to make it a lot harder for uh, most, if not many Australian households when things are getting more expensive faster than they're getting uh, paid. The inadequacy of wage growth has left many households feeling extra pressure to gain secondary jobs just to be able to survive. I work part time, so I only do three days a week. I'm constantly thinking or finding new ways to bring in more income or take on more work. I just don't seem to have a good balance yet. One of the areas families such as Chantel's have felt the impact of inflation most is in the grocery store. Widespread shortages has seen the cost of staple items rise significantly over the past year. I find that I'm having to cut back on, you know, favourite treats or um, a lot of brand items. My shops between Coles and Aldi um, leaning more towards an Aldi shop now because they are, you know, consumer friendly with their prices. Grocery shops easily can be 300 in a week and you know that's being frugal with my money. For Chantelle, the cost of living crisis has not only impacted her lifestyle, but also her well-being. I do get down, you know, often. Um, the boys come and ask, you know, my friends go on holidays, why can't we? That sort of thing. And that does, it does get you down because you know, you want to be able to give your kids fun times and nice holidays and, um, feeling the pinch financially, it's, it, it's just a constant thing in the back of my mind that I'm thinking about. A lot of households are looking for ways in which they can try and make their household budget go further. And one concept that economists talk about a lot is this idea of a loyalty tax, whereby if you stick with the same bank, the same mobile phone provider, uh, the same mortgage provider year in, year out, you probably aren't receiving the best deal. If, on the other hand, you do shop around, uh, even as often as just once a year, that's a good way to lower your uh, living costs, even at a time when we're perhaps we're not seeing the wage growth that we would like to see otherwise. As Chantel's story highlights, Times are very challenging for many Australian families in the current economic climate. 
However, there may be some relief found through spending wisely and shopping around in order to get the most value for money during these tough times.